skinny bloke what their driving's like, and they like to tell you they're either good or very good. Ask their opinion of the opposite sex, though, and you're likely to get a very different answer. Women can't read a map upside down. If you're travelling downwards on a map, they always tell you to turn left when you should, of course, turn right. Too careful on the road and never make a quick decision. Probably sounds rather male chauvinist to you, but one has to face the facts after all. Women, you won't be surprised to learn, disagree. Men think that they can park, they can read a map, and basically, they were born to drive. I think men are all just too big-headed. They just think they know how to drive and women don't. I think men do drive aggressively. Bring that guy to me, I'll show you how to read a map. Let's face it, men and women have been arguing about driving for years. But is there any evidence to back up those tired old clichés like women can't park or men are too arrogant behind the wheel? Well, Fifth Gear has decided to find out. We've chosen three opinionated couples to act as guinea pigs in a series of tests. <coughs> Meet Simon and Annie. Neither <coughs> makes a good passenger. There's the impatience coming out. What, what, what? I'm pursing the lips, tucking the steering wheel, <laughs> revving the <laughs> accelerator. What, you say you're telling me you enjoy sitting at traffic lights? Well, it's a fact of life, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Great darling, line. will you stop it? Relaxed, sir? I haven't done anything to you. No chance of a nice, relaxing drive with Kelly and Dave. Know. Brilliant, approaching a roundabout, no indication. Oh. Anybody behind you? Yes? No, actually, no, there yes. isn't anybody behind there me. Is. I've already checked There's the one way. One no, way there's... Pull out no, the Sierra behind no, you. No, there is nothing behind me. Bush! Airbag. I'm not... Boof! Boof! I'm not f***ing driving anymore. You slagging me off all the f time. And here's students Charlotte and Nick, who act like an old married couple once they're in the car. Watch out. Nick, I know! I'm sorry, yeah, but I know when to stop. Yeah. Can you put your windscreen wipers on, please? Do you know what? The more you tell me to do something, the more I don't want to do it. And finally, we're going to need someone to make sense of our test results. Professor Frank McKenna is the UK's leading authority in this area, and he'll be giving us the lowdown on how men and women differ. Let's face it, we all know that women can't park. They have a problem with just reversing, for starters, then getting all those angles right totally baffles them. Men just seem to be able to do it better. So, a simple test should prove the point. Come on, admit it. Nobody particularly likes having to parallel park, especially if they've got an audience. Nevertheless, our volunteers have got to squeeze into the designated space as fast as they can. And to add some real-life pressure, these two yellow jobbies will compress the space after 10 seconds. Take too long to park and you could feel the pinch. When you think about reversing, it does make demands on your spatial ability, your awareness of where your body is in relation to three-dimensional space. And when we look at tasks in the laboratory where you're rotating objects in space mentally, um, then men reliably perform better on that type of task. First up, it's Simon and... No problem at all. Next, it's Simon's wife, Annie, who's more tentative, takes ages, goes in far too steep, and guess what? Oh. Typical. Dave sets off confidently enough. Mind you, he's got a point to prove back at home. You can't park very well. You were abandoned more than park. <laughs> Need a taxi ride from the car to the curb sometimes. Thanks. <laughs> well, the technique can hardly be called pretty. Hey! But he does get in. Just. For all her talk, Kelly can't even find reverse. But once going, she turns out to be the quickest, smoothest, neatest parker so far. Right. If anyone should be good at this, it's Nick. He's always having to park. You'll spend about 10 minutes looking for a space that's big enough for the car. Then when you get there and the traffic's all built up behind you, you make me get out. <laughs> 
walk round the front of the car. You slide across subtly, no one sees you. I have to pile the black up. Now, who was it that said practice makes perfect? Oh, absolutely. Blimey, what must Charlotte's driving be like if she normally prefers Nick to park? I reckon that has to go down as a draw. OK, the women's spatial awareness wasn't great, but nor was the men's. Our second cliché being tested is, men think they're better drivers than they actually are. So, can they really control a vehicle better than women? At the last minute, our drivers will be asked to either make an emergency stop, or take evasive action to their right, or to their left. They all have to approach at a steady 45 miles an hour. And with the ABS disconnected, it's not as easy as you might think. <laughs> right, emergency avoidance. That horrible thing we hope we'll never have to do, but it could be tonight, tomorrow, a week's time, a year's time. But one day you're going to have to suddenly react to a, an accident or something happening in front of you. And that's what this test simulates. You won't know which way you're going to have to swerve or stop until the last minute. Now, girls, I reckon you're going to be good at this because we are very observant. You're not. You're half asleep most of the time we're when you're driving along. We, we're so not. So I reckon <laughs> that we'll be super, super good. Charlotte, are you looking forward to this? No, I'm absolutely terrified. Why? Because I've never done anything like this before and I don't know what's going to happen. And I'll probably drive straight through the middle of it. Well, I hope you won't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the way you brace yourself. <laughs> See, see right, I do. <laughs> off the oh. brakes. <laughs> you should have come off the brakes really yep. quickly and started pumping yep. pumping the brakes, then you got some steering and you'd have got it back round yep. again. But, you know, <laughs> it was crap. Bring me my next <laughs> victim, quite frankly. <laughs> My next victim is Simon, who, according to his wife, really needs good reactions. That's one thing I really, really hate that really annoys me about your driving when you're doing about 90 odd down the motorway, as everybody does. You'll actually go so close to the car in front of you and then you'll just go <laughs> like that and clip the back end off it almost. I, and it I, scares the life <laughs> out of me. It really does scare the life out of me. I think that's something, that's something from a... From Again, from guys, that's something that every sort of petrol head suffers from. Anybody who sort of watched a Formula mm. One race or even sort of rallying, mm. probably at the back of a mind somewhere thinks he can, he could, he could do it just as, just as good. Mm. <laughs> more speed, more speed. You only do. Brakes off the brake steer. Okay. That was better. But still but it up. Next, it's the girls' turn, and Kelly seems no more in control than the lads. But Annie showed what concentration and a cool head can do. <laughs> that was on the speed. <laughs> and then Charlotte came along and really rubbed our noses in it. Yes. I am. Oh, give up. Great. Does it again? The, the women actually outperformed the males. And when we look at Beyond the, this type of task, we see that there are real differences in driver confidence between men and women. And men tend to express a great deal of overconfidence in their driving skills. When we actually explore whether that driver confidence is well placed, does it actually match their ability? We find that in general, the confidence that people express in their ability is simply not matched by their actual driving ability.
No, 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 don't oh, f there. Oh, Join us to find out if women have any sense of direction whatsoever. Reading. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have a boys versus girls race to see if men really are the arrogant, aggressive, competitive drivers that women think they are. Ah, oh, the jet engine. Sir Frank Whittle's finest invention and perfect for what it was designed for, getting an aeroplane into the air. But two engineers from Yorkshire have decided to do something you wouldn't dare think possible. Yes, that's right. They've decided to strap a jet engine onto a go-kart. They must be mad. The two engineers in question are Chai Wright and Henry Donald, a pair of likely lads from Hebden Bridge with an imaginative taste in toys. Well, the reason we put this thing together was at first it was just really a laugh. That was, you know, it was as straightforward as that. We just, we've been already messing with all the carts, more cycle engines, what have you. Quite fast, good fun. And this engine came along and we thought, well, we've just got to try it. The engine originally came um, from a, um, a Phantom. It was a starter motor for a Phantom jet. And that's not all. This engine was actually used on the land speed record-breaking thrust SSC, one of a pair bought at auction for £1,000. And the military origins meant the workshop manuals were covered by the Official Secrets Act. We've actually tried to um, keep as much of the standard cart chassis, the brakes, steering and everything is pure cart, to keep it, you know, as a standard cart so it can go for a record. And setting a new world record is exactly what we're going to do today, with an official timekeeper to record the speed. Now it's about to start up, here are a few facts. It runs on kerosene just like an aeroplane and does one mile to the gallon. Power may not sound much, 100 bhp, but it doesn't weigh anything, so the power to weight ratio is phenomenal. The engine drives a drive chain which turns the wheels, rather than being powered by thrust. It's got an afterburner, mainly for looks, and it's very, very loud. But what you want to know is, how fast is it? Well, let's find out. But during the run, Chai won't be watching the speed. He'll be concentrating on the temperature gauge to make sure the delicate engine doesn't overheat. Right, now he's on his way, I'll just explain. I'm here with Trevor and his high-tech gadgetry. Now, what happens here is that the car breaks a light beam and starts the timer, travels a quarter of a mile down the runway, breaks a second light beam, which stops the timer, and this box of tricks works at the maximum speed. Hundred and forty three point seven miles an hour. Congratulations, boys. You're now officially the owners of the fastest gas powered turbine go kart in the world. But setting a world record has meant running the engine on the limit at least 2,000 degrees centigrade. For a moment, they thought they'd blown it. But in the end, relief. The only damage was sizzling paintwork. These boys love their engines, and they're not going to stop at this cart. They plan to build a whole variety of jet cars with engines up to 1,600 bhp, so they can take passengers along and demonstrate the thrill of jet power. I've got a feeling we'll be seeing more of Chai and Henry's record-breaking creations. Welcome back to Men vs Women, our not hugely scientific look at the battle of the sexes behind the wheel. We've already seen that the girls are no worse than the guys at parking. But when it comes to avoiding trouble... Oh, brakes! It's best to let us ladies drive. So, on to the next cliché then, women can't navigate. Actual control of a car is all well and good, but there's so much more to driving than that. Now, for all the women watching, this is a map. It's used to help guide oneself from one destination to another. I thought I ought to point it out, because for most women, when you hand them one of these, they start 
turning it around in the vague hope that it will lead them in the direction they want to go, which, of course, it won't. For this challenge, each team will start from the same location and be staggered by about 10 minutes. They will have a standard roadmap and will be asked to go from one destination to another. We will be observing who goes the furthest and who takes the longest. Boys in the blue car, girlies in the grey. Each vehicle has been fitted with a tracking device which will allow Tiff and I to keep a check on their progress. The first instruction of the envelope, no time to waste, get started, get moving, open it on the move. See you, Tiff. See you in victory lane, boys. See you in a bit. The first challenge is to find a car park on the other side of town. The M2 Pre car park on Bromsgrove Street. Beautiful, yeah. Right then, girls. This is where I need you to get to. Open it when you're on the move, and uh, you don't need any luck because uh, it's in the bag. Sweet. <laughs> Bit of a slow start for the girls, whereas the guys have already made it to the first checkpoint. Well done, boys. Well done. Very smooth. Nine minutes straight here. Where's your next instruction? And the rules say a new navigator for every leg of the journey. So where are we heading to? Barton in the Beans. Leicestershire without using a motorway. Oh. Barton in the Beans is a small village some 25 miles northeast of the boys' current location. Hey, well done. Hey. Right, you. The boys did it in slightly quicker time, which is rather annoying. These are your next instructions. There you go. Mega. But uh, yeah. before you open them, all change seats. Round we go. Round we go. Yes. Move around. Hey! What did you say? What did I say? Barton in the beans, Leicestershire, without using a motorway. What? Do I turn right or I don't know. In a minute, we'll be heading down the A4097. Which will take us out towards Kirdler. Uh, it's plain sailing from there. Don't go right. Don't go right. It's Leicester and Leicestershire. Yeah, but go, go. No, sorry, what, what? I think we'll be turning right here. This should be the uh, B4098. We're not, we're not doing the quickest, we're doing the easiest. No, uh, <laughs> but you see, the boys, being map readers, just saw A to B. They've worked their path along little country roofs. They are going straight for the docks. Yeah. The girls apparently took the main road to Coventry. Was that <laughs> shopping, shopping perhaps first? I am so annoyed with myself. I really am. It's quite staggering the fact that, that our destination is up there yes. by the red dot, yes. and they've gone it so is. far out. I, 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 I have no excuse, quite frankly. No, 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 down there, down there. No, here, here, here. Forward it's one, not looking one. too good for the girls. Right there, up there. Yeah. I will. But after only one hour, the boys have arrived. Barton of the Beans. Barton of the Beans. There you go. Hello, boys. It's Tiff. Yes. Well done. How is Barton in the Beans? Is it nice there? Uh, yeah, it's very quiet. Uh, there's people twitching the curtains because there's a car driving through it. Well, very well done. Now we just want you to quickly change seats, all move around again, and just uh, head due west to Whittington near Litchfield. And we'll see you there. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. God, it really just seems like we're in the middle of nowhere. A38, well, A38, Litch have you got Litchfield? A38, uh, Litchfield is just um, there. Because the Barton's not even signposted anymore. Still beat the women hands down anyway. Of course. They'll still be putting the makeup on there. Ah. Uh... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Half an hour after the boys, the girls eventually make it yeah. to Barton. Hello. Charlotte, it's Vicky. Right, we can tell that you've got to Barton, so well done, excellent stuff. I just have to ask, what were you doing in Coventry? What were we doing near Coventry? Um... Well, you, you can tell me when I see you. Anyway, right, your next port of call, you have to get to a place called Whittington. So we just need to get to Whittington in Litchfield. The boys are now so far ahead, they can attend to other things. Yeah, hello. God, there's... Bloody loads of Litchfield, Whittington's. Yeah. yeah, where's Litchfield? Pick up, pick up a B road, for the B4593, and that's as good as damn it. Is, is it Derbyshire or Gloucester or Lancashire? Uh, Hang on, this isn't F5. Yeah. Or Norfolk or Shropshire. Why doesn't it say Whittington then? <laughs> oh, f <laughs> the map reading. <laughs> <laughs> After one hour and 50 minutes, the boys arrive at the finish. Come on! You did it! 
Yeah. It's an empty car park. Is there somebody missing? <laughs> Very good. Oh. Uh, well, you did start ahead. They've got to be in here within, you know, 10 minutes for them to have uh, equaled your time. But they're now parked in a different village with a similar name. Whittington. Mm. We're not there. How We're do you know? here. Wiggington. Wiggington? How do you know? How do you know? Wiggington. It said Whittington. Did it say Wiggington? That makes us look even more stupid. <laughs> we can't even read. Really? Yeah. 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 It's going to be the joint. Uh, how nice. Oh, <laughs> in, a, in a sort of two hour drive, you managed to fall about 50 minutes behind. Um, <laughs> any excuse for the girls, Vix? Well, I know, girls, what no. do we do in Coventry? What do we do in Coventry? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shopping in Coventry. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Now, what are the men and women doing when they're engaged in this type of mark reading task? One of the factors that they're doing is they're trying to mentally rotate either the map or themselves in relation to that map so they know what, which direction they're going in. And of all the stereotypes that we have about men and women, this is perhaps one of the clearest where the stereotype turns out to be correct. Males do tend to be better at this type of mental rotation task. And of course the result is, at the end of the day, the men got there and the women get lost. Get a f***ing one, eh? Come on, a noddy. Get a f***ing one. We're going to straight up and just go back round. Why don't you just be asleep? They pull up between them and cut him off. Ah, oh, look at this lot playing right into the hands of the women who say men are overly competitive and aggressive at the helm. Obviously, there's no place for aggression on the roads, but this cliché may explain why more men are successful at motor racing than women. So, how better to test the limits of high-octane risk-taking than with a race? Before the race, our prof predicted that the boys, in orange, would blast through from the back, barging the girls out of the way and scream off into the lead. Then he reckoned that, having shut the girls out of the way, they'd set about each other. And you know what? He was absolutely right. Whatever you think about male aggression and competitiveness, the fact is, in a race, it works. The boys came home a comfortable first, second and third, with the girls bringing up the rear. What we've seen there is that while the males start at the back, they manage to push their way through to the front places. And they do that through a combination of competitiveness and aggression. And we start to see this being expressed on the road so that we see that males are more involved in driving violations. So while the males uh, can get to their destination a little bit quicker than the women on average, they also get to the hospital a little bit quicker than the women. So, what have we learned from all that lot, then? Well, in three of our four tests, the clichés seem to be borne out, with only parking throwing up a surprise. What we've seen probably won't stop men and women arguing, but it's been fun trying. Uh, I was really pleased that the guys won the navigation test, because she's always having a go at me for not being able to read maps, and they were beaten. They were beaten by nearly an hour. That was fair and square. That's a done deal. I'm sure he'll be uh, having a go at me about my navigation skills now, obviously, because I can't do it. Uh, the reverse parking is a different matter. Uh, I, I mean, I parked it 20 seconds, slight dink on the back, but Kelly was the fastest parker out of the boys and girls. I'm going to hear that every time we go shopping. Bit of noise about the whole map reading thing. We weren't too good at that, but, you know, made up for, it, for the hazard awareness thing. That was really good. The boys were rubbish actually and the girls are really good. Beating up parking, it's the reverse parking one, I'm never going to hear the end of it, never. Even the guys back at home, they will not shut up. I'm always ribbing her for what she does, I'm always parking for her, now it's going to be the other way around, can't believe it. <laughs>